Should you buy the Raspberry Pi 4 in 2022? Well, let's dive in and see. But you know what you should buy? PCB prototypes from PCBWay. PCBWay will allow you to create custom PCB prototypes, flexible PCBs, PCB assemblies, CNC, 3D printing, and much more. Let's say you were building a custom project and you needed a specific PCB for it to work correctly. All you need to do is go to PCBWay.com, become a member, get $5 for free, and order your first one to two layered standard PCB prototype with dimensions of within 100 to 100 millimeters, and with a quantity of 10 and get it all for free. After testing the PCB prototype, you can always go back and order a PCB assembly to get the real job done. PCB Way also has an open source community that you can join where you can find custom projects that users have created even with their Raspberry Pis. Basically, if you need anything from PCB prototypes to CNC 3D printing to SMD stencils, PCB Way has you covered. So, this is the year of 2022, and the Raspberry Pi 4 was released now three years ago. Man, we're getting old. In February of 2019. And there's one question that we're going to be trying to answer today. Should you buy the Raspberry Pi 4 in 2022? Well, this used to be a much, much easier question to answer. But when you take in all these factors that I will be explaining to you all today, you'll notice how much harder of a question this actually has become. So one of the biggest things that you look at when purchasing a new product is usually the price. So that's why we'll start out with the Raspberry Pi 4's price. And sadly, that is one of the biggest reasons to not purchase a Raspberry Pi 4 in this day and age, at least in my opinion. So as you may know, there is a big, big issue in the world right now, and that would be the global chip shortage. And it started back in 2020, thanks to good old COVID. As you may have heard, this chip shortage has affected the automobile industry, the PC industry, and especially the GPU industry. Like, you're not going to be getting one of those sweet 3080s for a while, are you? And in the recent months, it has finally made its way to affecting the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And this means that those good old $35 starting prices for the 2 gig, 55 for the 4 gig, and 75 for the 8 gig Pi 4 are no longer available basically anywhere. On Amazon, you can find 2 gig Pi 4s for going over $100. That is just insanity in my opinion. And the 8 gig Pi 4 is going for close to $200 on Amazon. That is literally insane. And that's not even talking about if you can find a Raspberry Pi 4 in stock. You may ask, well, what about eBay then? Well, I'm going to have to break it to you. The prices are insane there too. Most of the pies are going for over $100 as well. And you know, like when personally, when I'm buying something like a Raspberry Pi and it's under $100, it seems much better and you don't feel like you're spending a ton of money. But when I see that $100 mark, it just makes the whole thing seem so much more expensive. And when talking about something that is marketed as cheap, low budget, or affordable, it gets harder to, and harder to recommend something like at when you pass that $100 mark that's supposed to be half or even a quarter of the price that you can buy it for. The next logical thing to consider when purchasing a computer is probably going to be the performance. I know that the Raspberry Pi's performance is fairly well known, especially around my viewers, but I felt like it would be good to at least go over it. Especially if you're paying $100 plus, you're probably expecting, I mean, at least okay performance. So first of all, let's start out with the operating system support because that definitely is a big factor in performance. The Pi 4 has tons and tons of operating systems available, such as Ubuntu, Manjaro, Raspberry Pi OS, Fedora, Arch, and many more other custom distros, and even Android. However, even with all of these operating systems available, the Pi 4 still does not have proper video acceleration, which limits its performance in many tasks such as gaming or video playback. For this video though, I will be taking a look at Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit as my operating system of choice. It's lightweight, and as far as desktop usage goes, it does, does get the job done. So the overall desktop interface and appearance of this operating system and opening apps, it just seems to be okay. It does most things all right. I mean, it's not the most modern user interface, but does it get the job done? 
Yes, it does. The RAM usage of this operating system, as you can see, is fairly low. And if I was to open up these apps right here, if I was to open up Chromium, the File Manager, LibreOffice, all at the same time, as you can see, the Raspberry Pi 4 can handle it, but you might experience some slowdowns, even just if it's a little bit. If you try to play YouTube videos while, let's say, working in LibreOffice, it's possible, but don't expect to be watching higher video quality than 720p. Even when doing nothing on the system, 1080p is much harder to watch, and you're just going to be expecting or experiencing many, many drop frames. Even in 720p, you may experience a little bit, but overall, it should do 720p okay. In terms of gaming, though, the Pi 4 is an amazing emulation machine. It can emulate Dreamcast, PPSSP, and of course, many of the older titles. It does struggle a little bit on Wii, GameCube, emulation in the Dolphin emulator, or it does struggle a little bit in Sega. But when it comes to PC gaming, it's possible to run some old games such as Doom, or even newer titles using a Box 86 and Wine, but this is nowhere close to being your primary gaming device. As you can see here though, Doom runs perfectly fine, it definitely is playable, but you're probably not buying this just to play Doom. Overall though, if you're considering the original price, the Raspberry Pi 4 isn't terrible for the performance you're getting, but it's just when you get over that $100 price mark, it gets harder and harder to recommend. I know it may sound like I'm just hating on the Pi 4, but I mean, I'm just taking into consideration that we're talking about a $100 plus device here, which kind of just changes my viewpoint on the Raspberry Pi completely. Well, how about using the Raspberry Pi 4 for DIY projects? Is it worth a little bit more money if you really do need to use it for special DIY projects? Well, I mean, if you need a four-factor single board computer like the Pi 4, there aren't tons and tons of other devices available. For DIY projects, the Pi 4 can totally handle home servers, custom gaming devices, and really any cool project idea out there. But again, for $100 plus, dollars, is it worth it, or is there something else that you can spend your money on? I mean, this is really up to you, but for those really niche products, though, the Pi 4 is something that might be a one-of-a-kind device, which may make it a little bit more worth of your money if you really do need the Raspberry Pi for quick, and you're not going to be wanting to spend your money on some bigger computer. So for DIY projects, I could understand spending a little bit extra because it's kind of more niche and you need that special Raspberry Pi for form factor. Now, let's talk about some alternatives. Should you be spending your money on something other than the Raspberry Pi 4? Well, here's my opinion on that statement. If you're buying the Raspberry Pi 4 for desktop usage, then I probably would not recommend the Raspberry Pi 4 at this current state and price. However, later on, in time, this situation could completely change, and my opinion could completely go back to, yes, you should buy the Raspberry Pi 4, but that depends on the price change. But as for desktop usage goes, I would honestly spend your money on something like an old Dell Optiplex Office PC or just some other old cheap PC. You can find these Dell Optiplexes for $100 or sometimes even less than that on eBay, spec with a 4th gen Intel CPUs, 8 gigs of RAM, and an HDD for all less than the price of an 8 gigabyte Pi 4. Even if those specs don't sound insane, it's going to completely wipe the Pi 4 away in terms of desktop usage. As for software support, a PC is going to have way more support than the Pi 4 with way more operating systems available. If you're buying the Pi 4 to learn coding, to learn Linux, then buying one of these old PCs won't disappoint you. I personally would throw some great Linux to on one of these old PCs, such as Pop! OS or Manjaro, and it will fly through daily desktop tasks instead of using old Windows. You'll be able to watch 1080p YouTube, maybe even 4K, and you just won't have to worry about incompatible software. And like, let's say you were buying this to learn coding. Most of the software that was available on the Pi 4 will run just fine on these PCs too. And you can find these PCs that like the towers aren't crazy huge either. It's not comparable to the Pi 4's tiny form factor, but overall it's not a huge tower either. You can also upgrade them with 
SSDs, switch out that HDD, you can upgrade to more RAM if needed, and if you're wanting to build a home server, let's say, these PCs will even do a better job than the Raspberry Pi 4 too. Even if you want the Pi 4 to play with Linux and distro hop all around, you can do the same thing on an old PC with even more Linux distros available. And I know, I know it sounds like I'm just hating on the Raspberry Pi 4, but I'm just stating my thoughts on this current state situation. So as far as desktop usage goes, yeah, buy a desktop PC, buy an old Dell Optiplex. They are going to draw more power from the wall, but... For the performance you're getting, I would probably just stick one of those for desktop usage. But again, for DIY projects, the whole situation could change where one of these old PCs aren't good for some special small form factor handheld you're building or some special handheld laptop you're building or something like that where you actually do want a Raspberry Pi 4. There's one more alternative that I haven't mentioned yet to the Raspberry Pi 4. How about the Pi 400 though? What's so surprising to me is you can find them close to their intended price on Amazon, close to $100 to $120. For that price, you'd basically be getting a Pi 4 4 gigabyte model inside of a keyboard with proper cooling, and you could just connect a mouse to that keyboard, plug it into a monitor, and bam, you would have a nice Raspberry Pi 4 desktop setup. So... If what you were looking for was to use your Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop PC, then that could be a valid alternative. However, if you were looking to use your Pi 4 for DIY projects, or if you needed it because of its specific form factor, then the Pi 400 probably isn't the best alternative. But the Pi 400 will give you pretty much identical or similar performance to the Pi 4, and most of the same operating systems and software should just work just the same as the Pi 4 on the Pi 400. So overall, if you are looking for desktop usage, the Pi 400 is definitely a thing to consider. One more perfectly valid concern you may have when purchasing a Raspberry Pi 4 is if the Raspberry Pi 5 is going to come out soon. So the Pi 4 is already three years old now, and I would say I'm ready for a Pi 5 refresh. I'm ready to see what that board can do. However, I think it's pretty unlikely to see a Pi 5 anytime soon, especially since it's so hard to even find Pi 4s. If Pi 4s can't be produced quickly enough, I don't really see Pi 5s being pr produced pretty quickly either. And if you're interested in more information about the Pi 5 though, check out this video here that I where I took a look at some of the rumors about the Pi 5. However, overall, I don't think the Raspberry Pi 5 is coming too soon, so I wouldn't consider it a huge concern for those of you thinking to purchase a Pi 4. But, you know, I don't know anything. I can't be certain the Pi Raspberry Pi Foundation can surprise everyone and release it soon, or maybe they wouldn't. I don't know, so I'm just get, putting that out there. Okay, so to conclude this video, I would probably say... Don't buy the Pi 4 right now unless you have a very specific project in mind that requires low power consumption, a small device, and can work well on ARM. For desktop usage, as I mentioned before, I would recommend buying an older used PC because you're just going to get a much better performance and it's going to work better overall. However, the Pi 4 is still a special device, and if you can find it for at least close to MSRP and in stock, it's a really fun device to have and to play with and to try to push to its limits. That's one of my favorite reasons to use a Raspberry Pi 4 is just to, I mean, it's just fun to try to figure out those things that don't work so well out of the box. I mean, look at my channel. Most of my videos are done about the Pi 4. Like, there is so much that you can do with it. So, I mean, I hope that the video was helpful and at least gave you some, gave some of you who were considering purchasing a Pi 4 a bit of help. So any questions, let me know down below. A like to the video and a subscribe to the channel would be spectacular. Thanks for watching. Oh,